Hello there YouTube. This question is taken from the gate exam of 2014, set 1. It's a two marks question based on the concept of pipelining. Let's see the statement first. Consider two processors P1 and P2 executing the same instruction set. Assume that under identical conditions for the same input, a program running on P2 takes 25% less time. So program running on P2 takes 25% less time. If that program takes time T on this processor P1, then it is going to take 25% less time on processor P2. 25% less means 0.75 times of T, okay, because reducing 25% from T, you'll left with point, uh, you'll be left with 0.75 T. Next line is, but incurs 20% more CPA. So if CPA in processor P1 is C clocks per uh, instruction, then here it is 20% more. That means 1.2 times C. Okay, because you calculate it's 25%, you'll get 0.2 C and add it into C, that becomes 1.2 C. That's just given in the question. As compared to program running on P1, okay, if clock frequency of P1 is 1 gigahertz, then clock frequency of P2 in gigahertz is. So they are saying if clock frequency of P1 is 1 gigahertz, then we need to find this clock frequency. Okay. So first of all, let's define the number of instructions in the program. Say your program has I instructions. In total. I instructions in total. Each instruction takes C clock cycles, which is the meaning of CPA. CPA means number of clock cycles taken by one instruction on average. So that is C. Total instructions are I. That means total number of clocks total number of clocks is i into c okay now let's calculate the total time taken total time taken if 1 gigahertz is the clock frequency 1 gigahertz 1 gigahertz means 1 giga times per second the clock ticks because hertz means times per second giga means 10 raised to the power 9 so 10 raised to the power 9 times the clock ticks in one second okay this is how you can interpret this one gigahertz that means that means one clock one clock signal is going to require one nanosecond one upon 10 raised to the power 9 which is one nanosecond okay now you can see one clock needs one nanosecond or after every one nanosecond, we generate a clock signal. The program requires I into C clocks in total. That means time taken must be I C nanoseconds because each clock requires one nanosecond. Now just, just note that this is number of clocks. Number of clocks. Okay, this one is I C in number. This is time, the time taken by these many clocks. Now they have also given you 
द टाइम टेकन बाय प्रोसेसर पी वन टू एग्जीक्यूट दिस प्रोग्राम विच इज टी दैट ऑब्वियसली मीन वी हैव कैलकुलेटेड द वैल्यू फॉर टी एक्चुअली वी हैव एज्यूम्ड इट टू बी टी ओके सो नाउ वी जस्ट विल जस्ट रिप्लेस टी बाय आई सी नैनो सेकेंड्स देन दे ऑल्सो गिवन दैट दिस प्रोसेसर टेक्स ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट लेस टाइम then t t is ic nanoseconds so you, you can simply replace t by ic nanoseconds here also okay now let's concentrate on this side the cpi here is 1.2 c okay total time taken is 0.75 ic nanoseconds you need to find out the frequency how many will be the total clocks i instructions are there in the program and each instruction requires 1.2c clocks so the total number of clocks will be 1.2 ic just multiply the number of instructions into num uh, number of clocks taken by one instruction so 1.2 ic then this is the total number of clocks taken by the program this is the total number of time taken by the program so that is 0.75 ic nanoseconds okay total time taken by the program by total number of clocks taken by the program so can we say these many clocks require this much time okay just let me raise this board what i am saying these many clocks 1.2 ic clocks they require 0.75 ic nanoseconds okay can you calculate the clock frequency here from here obviously because you will just find out the time taken by one clock that means you have the time period of clock having time period of clock is just saying you know the clock frequency so let's find out one clock requires how much time so dividing both sides by 1.2 ic this one will get cancelled that means one clock and on the other side you have 0.75 ic nanoseconds divided by 1.2 ic okay ic and ic gets cancelled 0.5 divided by 1.2 where's my calculator okay i'll do it on my mobile i think it must be 0.6 something 0.75 divided by 1.2 yeah 0.625 now you know that for processor p2 one clock requires these many nanoseconds that means after every 0.625 nanoseconds a clock signal is generated after every 0.625 nanoseconds you generate one clock signal how can you convert it in the uh, uh, convert it to frequency frequency means how many times per second are you generating the clock how many times the clock is being generated per second okay that means you need to convert this side into seconds that means you need to have one second here one second how many clocks are generated in one second how many clocks are generated okay so to do so first of all let's divide both sides by 0.625 1 upon 0.625 clocks and here you will be left with 1 nanosecond 
so in one nanosecond these many clocks are generated okay now you convert this one nanosecond also into second one nano means uh, 10 raised to the power minus 9 10 raised to the power minus 9 when brought to this side will become 10 raised to the power plus 9 okay so that means like this and this nano can be removed so it is one second these many clocks that's your answer this is your frequency this one in one second you generate these many clocks now 10 raised to the power 9 can be replaced by giga because 10 raised to the power 9 is 1 giga so 1 upon 0 0.625 1 upon 0 0.625 giga clocks require 1 second and 1 upon 0 0.625 is 1 point something, 1.5, 1.6 maybe, 1 divided by 0.625 is 1.6. Okay, so I am just solving this and it comes out to be 1.6. So 1.6 giga clocks take 1 second, that's your frequency. In 1 second, you generate 1.6 giga clocks. That means the frequency is surely going to be 1.6 gigahertz because hertz means times per second. Okay, so your answer is 1.6 gigahertz. Okay, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope to see you in the next video also.